Hi everybody. Um, I have a special treat for you. I took a video of this this morning, but I didn't post it. I'm glad I didn't because it's a lot more exciting right now. The animals are here. I'm not climbing the, the trees. But you can see we got the horses and oh, that goat's eye in it. Come on, climb the tree. He's going for it. Or she, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Come on, climb the tree. He's jumping up there. See? It's not really climbing up it though. Sometimes like they are up in that tree. And I forgot my vape. Let's see. Can you still see them? Ugh. Get it down lower. Hi, goats. Hi, donkey. All right. I forgot my vape, so just watch the animals. And I will be right back. Hi, donkey. Let's go say hi. All right, try not to step on any dog poop. Hi. Want me to pet you? I'll pet your nose. Oh, oh I can't reach it. Hi, the gang's all here, except for the horses, but they're back there. Wait, there's one more donkey. Hi. Oh, if Luna wasn't blind, she'd be over here checking them all out. Yeah, there's one more donkey and then two horses. And that one goat just sniffed the other goat's butt. Oh, here comes the horse. Oh, look, it's climbing the tree. Oh, you get up there. You get up there. Oh, she fell. Here. Here you go. Now she's stuck in the tree. <laughs> you want this? There you go. All right, back to the video. Do you not have any ears? God, goat's eyes look so weird. Can I pet you? Nope, there's no food. Oh, this donkey wants to be pet. Hey, don't butt him. I'm gonna pet you. All right, bye everybody. Oh, the little donkey's here. Here's the little donkey. All right. Time to go back to my video. Our special guest stars are still here, but. 
Oh, look, that one's climbing the tree again. Can you see it? They usually climb higher. So this was nothing. All right, bye guys. Oh, Luna's yelling to get let in. Well, I know people will like this. So here's Luna. My little wild animal. Well, they're not wild animals back there, but you know what I mean. My little girl. I just went to pick her up and she jumped up and hit her head on the door. I guess I surprised her. But, oh, this is all crooked. All right. You like that? You like that? All right. You wanna go inside? Yeah, she wants her treat. All right, I will be right back. Again, sorry. Luna, Luna, over here. Over here. Come on, Luna, come on. Luna, come here. Yeah, that was me. All right. I wish they had like fancy photo, uh, video editing stuff so I could like cut out the breaks whenever I went inside both times, but um, I haven't downloaded anything that would allow me to do that. Um, I know there are programs, um, but. Oh, well, I hope you don't mind having to sit there for a second while I take care of my dog or went and got my vape. Um, one of the reasons why I chose to do this video outside was so you could see the sunset. It's not insanely pretty tonight, but it's pretty enough. Um, there we go. Um, London Fog, here on Z1077 with the Drusifer. Um, ooh, that's what I could talk about. I was going to talk about something else, but um, I'm going to talk about music. Um, I was, I grew up playing in band, and I was, not to toot my own horn, I was really good. Um, I was always first chair, uh, except for my sixth grade year when I was in, when I was a trumpet, uh, cause there were like 30 freaking trumpets and, um, it was, you know, it was whatever. There was a lot of competition in the trumpet section, but I ended up moving to playing baritone in seventh grade. And I stuck with baritone ever after that. Um, and I was always first chair. There was one week that I wasn't first chair because second chair, uh, Braden, um, challenged me and I didn't prepare for it because I thought I could just wing it and play it, play the music that he gave me like on the spot and I failed. <laughs> and so I lost first chair for like a week. Um, and then after, after so many days you can challenge again. And, um, I challenged Brayden and I beat the crap out of him. I played the hell out of it. But um, yeah, my, my band director was really pissed that I lost the chair in the first place because he knew I was better than that. I did private lessons with him and um, it was not easy being his pupil. Um, he expected a lot of me and any time I messed up in class or in band class, I would get detention. 
like wasn't playing up to his standards. I um, and I can't remember. Like I think one time I asked a stupid question, and he gave me detention. Um, well, he did teach me a lot. What he taught me most was to hate bands. Uh, when we moved, this was here in Oklahoma because we moved away from Oklahoma when I was 15, and he had been my band director for him alone for two years at that time. Um, I don't think he ever was the band director at the middle school. I think that was Miss Schultz, Mrs. Schultz, and um, who was the other one? I can't remember, but he was the junior high uh, band director. And so when I got to junior high, I had him two years in a row. And I think I started my lessons with him. I don't know if I started those when I was in seventh grade or not until I was in eighth grade. But we went to church with him. And um, my mom sang in the choir with him. Um, so he, I guess, had suggested it to her. And that's why I started taking lessons from him. It made me a lot better of a baritone player. But at the same time, it made me resent music. Um, just because I kept on getting detention for stupid things. Um, I, I, the one of them was I was at a, a, we were at a football game and when something good happened, I went boom. And he was like, detention. You know, anytime I acted up or didn't do something that he liked or that he approved of as his pupil, he would give me detention. And it sucked. I bet my freshman year of high school, oh, well, junior high, freshman year, um, cause it was the junior high was eighth and ninth. Um, but I bet my freshman year, ninth grade year, I probably got at least 13 to 15 detentions from him just that year. Um, it got to whenever it was like the maybe third or fourth time in a matter of a couple weeks, the guy, the, the teacher who did detention was the principal, one of the principals. I think it was the assistant principal. And he was like, you're in here an awful lot for someone who I don't know because I've never seen you in my office before. And I explained to him what was happening. And um, he was like, ah, that's, that's, um, at least you're not getting in trouble. <laughs> you know, like that was his reaction. Like, at least you're, you know, not, not doing anything bad. It's just, he goes, that's, I'm sorry that's happening to you. And then like the rest of the year, every time I would come in, he'd go, what'd you do this time? And I'd tell him and he goes, man, that guy is ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you, you and me both think that sister. Um, so when we moved to Missouri, I quit bands. I wanted nothing to do with it. It had made me so unhappy my eighth and ninth grade year that I was just like, I'm done. And lo and behold, every friend I made that first semester, um, at my new high school in Missouri, um, they were all in band. Kelly was in band, um, Cynthia was in band, Bonnie was in band, um, who else? I think that might have been it. But I came, became really close with a couple of people and it just turned out that they were in band. And I was just like, okay, this is kind of a sign. You know, I'm, that's where I'm meant to be. So second semester I rejoined the band and bump a da bum was first chair out of two of us. Um, there had been a third, but he graduated at the semester because he was a senior and he, because he didn't want to stick through and, and finish the other semester and, and everything. So, um, there were only two of us and I got first chair and that's the thing when it comes to music, I love instrumentals. I love instrumentals. I like, we played some really hard music, uh, when I lived in Oklahoma the first time. And, um, we, I mean, it was. Like I, there's stuff I, I was listening to a classical station the other day and um, on my on my Spotify and there was a song. It just came on. I was like, I played this in junior high. That was the level of band that we were at. And that's why he expected such excellence, because we played really hard stuff and we would go to competitions and always get a one. You know, it was like if like I don't recall ever getting a two at any of the competitions that we went to. Um, my eighth or ninth grade year, I, we were excellent. The whole band program in Altus was excellent. And, um, and it gave me an appreciation for instrumental music. Like I love all kinds of music. I, I mean, 
rap is kind of iffy. Country is an absolute no. Um, except for the few songs that I do like. But I, I will not turn on the country radio station and be like, yeah, that's my jam. I'd be like, ugh, stick a pitchfork in the side of my head. So no offense to people who do love um, country music. I mean, absolutely no offense. Um, I just, it's not for me. And what's funny is I grew up here in Oklahoma, and you would think that I would like it. Um, but so not the case. I liked pop. I liked grunge rock. I liked, you know, everything. Well, basically every 90s group that had popular music I loved. That was not, well, there was some rap. Like 90s rap. I loved 90s rap. Like Bone Thugs and Harmony, oh my God, I could listen to some Bone Thugs and Harmony. Um, meet you at the crossroads, so you won't be lonely. Meet you at the crossroads, so you won't be lonely. Um, I love that song. It's my favorite song of Bone Thugs and Harmony. It was an awesome music video too. I loved that music video, but I'm getting off the subject. Um, I um, ended up joining the bands in Missouri, and they were a big, big into marching bands, not so much into the symphonic band, which was a complete change of what it had been like here in Oklahoma. We were a shitty marching band and exceptional at symphonic. Um, very exceptional at symphonic, I guess I should say. And so moving to a school where symphonic band was not important, but marching band was, I was like, I had to step up my game and um, get up with knowing um, how to march on the field. And that was one thing. I, I became section leader my junior year because I was technically only section leader the, the end of my sophomore year because the actual section leader left and I was first chair. So I was basically section leader, but I hadn't tried out and auditioned for it like, you, like you're supposed to do uh, to be a section leader. So um, that first... Um, that first year of me trying to march for real instead of just doing like spelling out letters on the field. Like that's all we did at my at junior and my junior high. Like we, we would do like three formations and then stand there and play, you know, like it was not very difficult. Um, is it getting too dark? Um, I wish the sunset was prettier tonight, but oh well. I'll move over here so you can still see the sunset. Let's see if I can focus on it. Yeah, it's a subpar. Um, subpar uh, sunset uh, for here, even. So, um, anyways, marching band. And they were big in the marching band. And so me learning how to march and everything was was paramount. And I caught on pretty quickly. And um, we, won, we won a lot of competitions that we went to. And we actually ended up performing at the halftime show at the, uh, at the Sugar Bowl in 2000. And, well, it was, it was technically 2003 because the Sugar Bowl was on, um, no. It was my junior year. So it was, it was technically 2002. Um, and we um, performed at the halftime show and did a competition there. And out of like nine bands came in third and that was fun. And we went to New Orleans for that, obviously, Sugar, Sugar Bowls in New Orleans. Um, and uh, it was fun. I really liked it. But when it came to symphonic band, we would just play like stuff that was so easy. It was just my, my, performance skills really declined because I wasn't challenged as a musician. And um, it was a bit of a letdown, but how well we did in marching bands so made up for it. You know, it was just, it was a trade-off, you know? And I, I became a fierce marching band competitor, um, taking it very serious, uh, making sure that my section, because uh, I, was, I was a section leader over not just the baritones, but the low brass. There were three of us. There were three section leaders for the low brass, the trombone one, the baritone one, and the tuba one. But we oversaw everybody. Um, it wasn't just you had your 
your instrument. It was suction leader over the low brass. Um, and since there were so many of us, that's why there had to be one from each section. Um, so that was, um, that was fun. At one competition, we were up against Jefferson City High School, um, a band of like, because our, our band was about like 111-ish or so um, strong. Um, I think Jefferson High School, I think theirs was over 300. And they're marching, like they had like a big semi that they took to marching band shows to carry all their stuff. And um, that competition, we were only up against them because the top, like the, all the other bands that were there had like bands of like 50 or less. Um, so they did it by band size instead of school size, which is what most competitions are usually school size. Um, and so it went by band size and the top level was 100 plus. There was no, you know, anything above 100. So us marching against a band that was three times our size plus, or th plus, I, I can't remember how many they had, but they, if we'd gone by school size, we would have been the biggest and there would have been no one to compete against, which that would have been fine by me, but we were up against Jefferson City and um, they stomped us. They stomped us so hard, except for in one category, best low brass. When they said best low brass Fort Zumwalt at North High School, I jumped and leapt and screamed about it. I was just, I was so ecstatic. I mean, I, we, we were up against the band, you know, three times our size and our low brass beat theirs. Like that was like, that's probably one of my biggest moments of pride from, from high school in Missouri was beating Jefferson City's low brass and they stomped us and everything else. I, like, I didn't even care that we got second. We were only up against them in our division. Um, so we all still, we got, we got a big trophy, you know, but um, it was a very awesome moment. And our, um, the band director, we had one band director did woodwinds, the other band director did, did brass instruments. And he was ecstatic for us. Um, so it was just like, after we were done, like, because we were standing next to the other bands, like they're like right there, like you're all lined up on the field and we would just get in, in lines in our uniforms without our instruments. And we were standing out there and that happened. I just looked over at all of them and was like, oh, you can't see me, can you? I was like, you know, it was just, it was a little asshole moment, you know, like high schoolers can be little a-holes. I, sorry, I just said the full thing. They can be little a-holes. And I was definitely one in that moment because we deserved it. We deserved a lot more of the superlatives at that competition, but you can't compete against a show that has 300 people in it, 300 plus. Um, so it is what it is, but that's one of my shining moments of high school when it comes to bands. I mean, I, I own a high school record for breaststroke um, at my school. And to the best of my knowledge, it still stands. Um, and I got that my sophomore year. So those are my two crowning achievements uh, from high school. But um, when it comes to like regular music, um, like I said, I, I like a little bit of everything, but like probably my next after instrumental would be Excuse me. Show tunes. I love show tunes. I was raised on musicals and, um, excuse me, but I heard the donkey brain. Um, I, um, loved watching musicals with my mom and she, that's all my, me and my siblings grew up watching musicals. The high school in Altus did a school musical every year and it was a big production, like the whole town went you know it was like if you were like it ran for like two weeks three weeks and it was every night um and the high, like the high school kids did it and they would bring in the elementary school kids um on certain days during the day and and the, they would perform it like it was just it was a big deal and the school made a lot of because like they charged for tickets too like it was you know it, it was a big 
fundraiser for the school to do this musical. And um, my sisters were in it whenever they were in high school. They, had, they, they just had small parts. Aaron only did chorus. Rachel actually had a character in, um, um, was it Best? No, not Best Little Warehouse. No. Um, um, oh, Little Shop of Horrors. Um, she was one of the girls on the radio, on the radio show. And so she got to come out and be like, have a character name and sing, sing a little part. So she didn't have a huge part. Um, and I don't remember if she was ever in any of the other musicals while she was in high school. She was in choir, so she had to have been. I just don't remember. And then my brother was in band, and he was in the pit every year that he was in, um, in high school. So, I mean, everybody was associated with the musical in my family. Um, so it was very big in our house. Um, you know, we, I just loved musicals. And the first time I ever saw one when on stage, that was when we moved to Missouri and we went to the Muni. And the Muni is a huge outdoor theater in St. Louis, Missouri. It is, um, Sorry, I'm trying to change the brightness here so you can see me a little bit better. Um, it was, uh, which one was it? I cannot remember which, it might have been Godspell. Because Godspell was my favorite. It was one, like when I was younger, it was my absolute favorite. And I'm not religious, but I just love the story. I love the music. Everything about it is so fun. I loved the movie. And um, I, uh, just, yeah, wonderful. And I actually, the reason why I discovered Godspell was because I was recording something back before there was DVR, you know, back in the Stone Ages when there, when there was no DVR and there was no pausing live TV or setting things to record unless you had the automatic thing with your VCR that you could set it to record at a certain time and you had to have it to that channel with the TV on, um, stuff like that. But I had recorded something and we went somewhere. It might've been like church or to some school function or whatever. And I came back and Godspell had come on after what I had recorded. And um, so I, I ended up watching it and I just fell in love. And there was just, there's so many musicals that I love. Um, so many. Um, movie, movie musicals and stage, just stage musicals. When I say movie musicals, I mean like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Um, what are some other movie musicals? Like ones that were made just for the screen and then were later adapted into stage performances. But Seven Brides for Seven Brothers is one of my all-time favorite musicals. Um, and um, bless her beautiful hind wherever you may be. We ain't met yet, but I'm willing to bet she's the gal for me. Sorry, as I don't sing very well anymore, I used to sing really well. Um, I only did one musical in, in high school when we moved to Missouri, and I was Harold Hill in the music band, and my singing was not great. My mom has a recording of it, and I we watched it, or I, she was watching it, or had it going after we moved here um, to, back to Oklahoma, and it was on, and I could hear myself singing, and I just cringed and, and ran out of the room. Um, Basically, I was the only guy who could sing, dance, and act. Um, sing somewhat, but like the range, I, my, I'm, I'm a baritone uh, in vocal range as well. Um, and so singing the high songs that he in his in the register for uh, for Harold Hill was just really hard. And my I guys, I, I couldn't get it all the time, get the, all the right notes without it sounding harsh. Um, but we did okay. But um, other music that I like, I really like dance music. Um, there's a radio station on uh, satellite radio on Sirius XM called BPM. And when I first got satellite radio and I was like in my early 20s, my mom got it because they got it for all the cars. Um, it rocked my world out. I love dance music. Like I don't care if it's the same beat with like three or four words that are just repeated over and over with crazy stuff, but I love dance music. Uh, one of my favorite uh, DJs is called Skrillex, 
and um, I bought his album because I had heard one of one of his songs on like Pandora or something, and so I bought the album and I just loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. He, the the album is mostly du um, dubstep. It's the music that sounds like there's a hard beat, a, bi a big bass beat, and then it sounds like forks and screwdrivers and um, nuts and bolts are in a blender. That's what dubstep is. It's not meant to be a lighthearted dance song. This is like music that when it comes on, you are like moving because you are on so many drugs. Um, I My party phase of, of doing party drugs and going to the bar to dance, like that was long in my in my early 20s. Um, but I, did have a, I do have a history of that. Um, but anyways, that's kind of like, that's what a lot of that music is for, for raves where people are high on drugs. Um, there's a lot of people who go to raves who don't use drugs, but the main purpose of a lot of the music is to like build you up and get you excited for whenever the, whenever the beat drops, when the beat drops, you just go crazy. So whenever I'm listening to that music in my car, I am rocking it out. Let me tell you what, um, I um, am a one man show in my car. I could be singing Madonna. I could be singing um, Kesha. I could be singing a show tune. I could be singing um, um, Tom Petty. I could be singing the Beatles and I will make a grade A performance out of it. Like you would be like, whoa, if you if you were sitting next to me in in, uh, in traffic, you'd be like, what the hell is wrong with that guy? And I'm pretty sure people, oop, dang it. Come on, come back, come back, come back. All right, there we go. All right, well, it looks like time is about to run out on this um, Cinderella story um, about my love for music. But I love just about anything. And like I said, when I'm in the car, I will perform the hell out of it. And I'm pretty sure people think that guy is batshit crazy. And you know what? I'm having a good time. It makes my drives all a little bit more easy to bear because I live outside of Oklahoma City and I go to Oklahoma City a lot. I go to work out with my sponsor. I go to meetings. I hang out with other friends. Um, and so I, I'm I'm driving the, the 30 minutes into the city a lot. And so having a little one, one man show, one woman show, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's always really fun. Um, it also helps me believe it or not, focus on the road. I know that sounds insane, uh, playing music and singing, but um, having ADHD, um, I can get distracted on the road. And so having my brain do something else while I drive actually helps me focus. Like whenever, um, I don't know if you see me, I'm doing this a lot in videos and I do it because it, I, it helps me get rid of the excess energy and um, I'm focusing on what I'm saying rather than being like, Ooh, sparkly. Oh my God. Butterfly. You know, I'm still, I still mess up a lot, but I've gotten a lot better. And also my doctor changed my medicine. So I, I went up in, um, my stimulant for ADHD, which is something to be very cautious of. I know being, being a recovery meth addict, but it doesn't affect me like that. Um, I, today was my first day on the double dose of Adderall XR and I felt great. Like, I feel like so much more focused. I hope you can notice in my storytelling, um, and my hyperactivity is down a lot. It's still there, but I take another drug that causes, it's called akathisia. It's, and it looks like hyperactivity. So I'm pretty sure what I'm still experiencing now is just akathisia from being on a high dose of Latuda. So, um, you know, you can't win them all, but I'm just glad that I'm able to focus and not be dancing in my chair without music playing. That's what, usually what it looks like whenever I'm sitting in a meeting. Looks like I'm trying to do the twists because I, I always have my leg crossed and then like my foot, foot is shaking like this and I'm twisting like this. So it just, it looks like I'm trying to dance. 
So um, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end this. I've been going for 35 minutes, well, 34 minutes and 59 seconds, 35 minutes. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this because also you can't see me anymore. So um, thank you for tuning in today. Um, as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And also um, do something kind for somebody else uh, today or tomorrow or somewhere in the near future. Um, like whatever you feel like, and then don't brag about it. I know I haven't said this in a while or said that in a while, but um, I'm gonna try to keep it being my end of video thing. So like, share, and su subscribe and be nice to somebody without bragging about it. Um, and um, it'll make you both really happy. So anyways, bye. <coughs> I'm sorry, that was a weak bye. Let me, let me. Bye.